All right, this video starts a new series of videos I'm going to do called The Closes. And what I'm going to do over this next several videos, and in each video I'm going to give you two to four closes that can be used in various ways when you're in the demonstration and in the close with people. I'm doing these in smaller sections because I, I, the way to work these is pick one, listen to several of them, then pick one you really like and just listen to those two to four closes over and over. Master the ones that really click with you. I want you to treat this buffet style. If the close makes sense to you, make it your own, put it on your tray, take it with you, master it, and use it in the home. If it doesn't make sense to you or doesn't fit your personality, leave it at the bu buffet counter. You don't have to master all of these, but if we can get three or four more in your arsenal, and for those of you that really apply yourself, 10 or 12 in your arsenal out of this whole series, it can really help you develop that time and that conversation in the close. Some of these you have heard before. Some of these you may never have heard about before, but we're going to call this the closes. Please, again, subscribe, like, follow, and leave comments. And we'll see if we can expand your repertoire, your arsenal here a little bit. So the first one I want to talk about is the ever popular price lottery. So the price lottery is a really fun way to find out what somebody's thinking this project should cost in a much more honest fashion than once you have the number on the table saying, Hey, John and Mary, before I got here today, what did you think a project of this magnitude would be? Because a lot of times, once you have the number on the table and you ask them a question like that, they might sandbag you or fib a little bit and lowball the response. Because if, they, if they're at all with it, they understand the conversation you're trying to create. Some will be completely honest, but others will lowball you. So what you can do is use the price lottery. So the way you do the price lottery is like this. You've got everything priced up. You've got your one clicks, got your one year price added. You're in presentation mode. You're getting ready to literally go into the close. You're getting ready to tell them the entry to closing. You know, hey folks, it's not a negotiation. It's a conversation. I'm completely transparent here. I just have a lot of information to cover with you. And then I'm going to qualify you for as many programs as I can to save you money. Okay. So I, right before I do that, right before that, I go, Hey folks, let me ask you, would you like to play a little game? Look at you. What do you mean? Questioning in their eyes. My company allows me to do something that will kind of create a report card for me to tell me how well I'm doing with my demonstrations and with explaining our products. It works like this. It's called the price lottery. And you already have two pieces of paper ready and you slide those two pieces of paper across to them. And you go, the way it works is I want you to write down on this piece of paper what, your, what you think this project will be. And this is key, you gotta say this to them. Not what you hope it'll be, but what you truly and really think it'll be. Because if you can guess within $500 of what I've already got written down, it's already figured up, I'm authorized to give you $500 off of this package. And my company lets me do that because it just kind of lets me know how well I'm doing out here explaining our products. So go ahead, think for a minute, think about everything we covered with the company and the products and how things are made. Don't put down what you hope it's gonna be. Write down what you honestly think this project will be and just hold on to that piece of paper for a second. And they'll think about it and they might talk to each other. And you can even tell them. And, and go ahead and talk about what you know. You know, see, one of y'all can go higher or lower. Y'all can cover a little more ground. It's okay. Make a game out of it. Make a game out of it. And so they both write down their number. Now, when you go to read the order and present the price to them, they're going to forget all about the price lottery like they forget about everything else. And it's going to fly out of their head. But at the right moment, after you've let them calm down and you've let them express themselves and get all that pressure out, you can sit there and go, folks, now remember this is your one-year quote. What did you write down for the price lottery? And you get them to flip it over, and you'll be really interested. A lot of times one will be more, one will be less. 
uh, you know, it's just, it really gives you an honest barometer of what they thought. And you can have some fun with this too. Obviously, if they get within the $500, you take the $500 off. But if somebody guesses more, especially you got one that guessed less and one that guessed more, what I'll always do and I'll go, well, folks, I can't give it away, but I tell you what, I love to see somebody win. Let's change the price from $27,000 to $29,000. And that makes you a winner, Mary. I'll go ahead and raise it up so you can be a winner. And you'll see them get a startled look on their face and then you can just laugh and make. It's designed to make a game out of it and create a little fun little conversation. And if you can get a joke in there, that's great too. But it'll get you some honest information. Try the price lottery. Bigger jobs, make it a thousand dollars. But don't make it a crazy number. You know, if it's a, if it's a rehash shower or if it's, you know, windows for 15 to 20 grand, don't tell them they get two thousand dollars to win the price lottery. Make it like 500. And if you're talking about a one year of 28 or 30 or 34,000, make it a thousand dollars. You can have fun with it. It's your game. Do it any way you want. But try the price lottery out. It can really do some interesting things in the house. Now, the next one I want to introduce to you, this one is called the triangle close. Now, this is a conversational close. And with the triangle close, what you're going to do is this usually comes, you're in the close. Hopefully, I'm having this at the one year or the initial visit incentive uh, number, you know, the one click number. This isn't a close I would roll out after I've gotten into MODs. This is better off when you're dealing with a little bit bigger number. And I would simply, you're having conversation and it comes up where it's appropriate to look at John and Mary and you go, well, John and Mary, we definitely have some flexibility in how we could structure things here, but I want to show you where we come from as a company. I want to just share with you the decision that Remodel USA made years ago when it came to pricing our products. See, when you look at something like a project like this, John and Mary, you can have, there are three things involved. Those three things are the lowest price, the fastest install, or the best product, warranty, and workmanship. And workmanship and install is kind of the same thing, yes, but I use the word install here and workmanship here because I want to separate them into three categories. So John and Mary, when you're talking about work like this on your home, there are three segments that this breaks down into. And that's the lowest price for the project, the fastest installation, getting it done as soon as possible, and very quickly and very timely in, in its execution. And then the best product, best warranty, and best workmanship. Now, the reality in business is a good company can give you two of those three. Some companies aren't going to give you any of them. And other companies that are mediocre will give you one. But a good, well-executed company is going to give you two out of those three. If a company gave you all three, they'd go out of business. If they gave you the best possible product in the market with the best coverage and any warranty out there and the best workmanship, the best installers that you can get on the market, which means they're getting top wages, and you gave somebody the lowest possible price against any competitor out there, and you did it as soon as possible, you'd go bankrupt. You wouldn't be there as a company. But a company can give you two of the three. They can give you the best possible product, warranty, and workmanship, or the lowest price, or the fastest install. Which two do you want, John and Mary? I can give you the best product and workmanship at the lowest possible price, but it's not going to happen very fast. It's going to be done on a schedule when we don't have anything else going on. And we'll have to be able to leave that job at a moment's notice if we can go do better, make more money elsewhere and come back. So it'll start and stop, start and stop. And it could be a long time before we get out here. But that gets you the lowest possible price and the best product, but nothing fast here. Or you could have the fastest install and the lowest possible price. But you're really going to have to give up a lot here. Which two do you want? Now, they, you might get goofballs that are going to tell you that they want lowest price 
and, and they'll take the, the one that they're going to play games with you is they're going to sit here and go, well, I don't care how long it takes. Give me the best product at the lowest price. You can take as long as you want. And I just take that right back away from them. I simply go, John and Mary, you say that now, but when it takes eight months for us to come out here and then your bathroom is dismantled for six months while we're working on it, starting and stopping, that's not going to work for either one of us. It's not a good solution. And then I just simply tell them, we decided as a long time ago that the business we were going to be in was this one right here, John and Mary. We're going to give you the most timely installation. If you haven't told them about concierge service, you could then tell them now. We're going to give you the start to stop. Nobody's leaving in between. And we're going to use the best possible products. We're going to use the best warranty and the best workmanship. We might not be the lowest price you'll get, but we're going to give you more bang for your buck, more value for your money than any other company out there. That I can promise you. And then you can ask for the business again or do an incentive drop or have another conversation. But that's called the triangle close. It's a great way to make a point. All right. This next one I want to talk about. This one is reduce to the ridiculous. And I hope for video purposes I spelled that right. Reduce to ridiculous. So when you're reducing to the ridiculous, the simple way to do reduce to the ridiculous is one I've taught in training. And that's where you do something like three-step value bump or ARIO. You bring it down to the money. They, talk, they, they say it comes down to that. You've already isolated a monthly investment that works for them. It's 300 or 275 or 350 a month. And you simply in your head divide 30 days in a month into that. Like let's say they agreed they could do $300 a month. Well, that's $10 a day. And you go, folks, isn't it worth $10 a day to get this project done the right way with these kind of quality materials with this kind of execution? So that's the simple way to reduce the ridiculous is you just take the monthly investment that you figured out divided by 30 and you ask them if it's not worth that much a day. If they said $275 a month is what they could handle, that's only like $8 a day. So that's one way to do it. The more advanced way to reduce to the ridiculous is when they can tell you a number that they would have signed at, what we call the magic number, where they're like, well, I thought this was going to be $15,000. So what you're saying, John, and I can't get to $15,000, I'm just asking if we'd have been at 15, we'd be doing the paperwork. We'd be writing this up. Yep, that's what I'm telling you. That's a magic number. We're going to talk more about the magic number on a different video. But that's a magic number. They've given you the number that that number they would have done it at. Now, at that point, when you're executing reduce to the ridiculous, all you're taking care of is the difference between it. So if I get that commitment that they would do it for 15, that's the perfect tee up to then do a higher authority phone call. You give your manager that magic number. Remember, the only two reasons we're talking about on an MOD call is either the biggest problem that we discovered in the inspection, and we can't stand the idea of leaving this home without solving that problem, or we're calling our manager to share the magic number. I know we can't get there, boss, but I just wanted to let you know where I was at. He did say if we were there, they would have done it. So we're calling to share the magic number. So it's the perfect tee up when you get the magic number to then call your higher authority, your manager gives you a reason, social media, flex install, whatever, to bring, give them an incentive to discount down. And then once you've given them the incentive, you save them an additional $1,100, $1,500, $1,800. So now they've saving face. You've given them a reason why they can now go along with what you're going to explain. Then I'm going to take the new difference between the magic number and wherever I'm at after that incentive, after that discount. Only that amount am I talking about. And I can reduce that to the ridiculous. For instance, they say that 15,000 is their magic number. We'd have been doing, I asked them, we'd have been doing the order. If we were at 15, they go, yep. I go, okay, well, we can't do that, but I appreciate your candor, John. I appreciate you being up front with me. And then I get the higher authority and I was at 25. I'm just using round numbers for an example. Obviously, I wouldn't be sitting on a round number. I would be on an exact number. 
but for the sake, I'm just going to use round numbers to have the conversation. So I'm at 25, and then my manager gives me a $2,000 incentive, and I come from 25 down to 23. Now, what's the difference between the 15,000, that was the magic number, and the 23 that I'm now at? Well, that difference is $8,000. And so then I could talk about, folks, we're talking about a difference. And you got to, you might have to play with your calculator or do it in your head, but I could sit there and go, folks, we're talking about a difference here over the next five years. And I take 365 times five because there's 365 days in a year. And I'm talking about five years. That's 1825. And I take the 8,000 and divide it by 1825. I say, folks, to get this product done the right way by our company, you were saying 15. My manager just saved us $2,000 bringing this down to 23. Over the next five years, I'm not going to say the word 8,000. I'm not going to say, well, now we're just $8,000 apart. I'm not going to say that. I'm going to say over the next five years, that's only $4. And 38 cents a day extra for less than a pack of cigarettes or for less than a coffee at Starbucks or less than this or less than that, less than a tuna sandwich at the deli. We can take care of that difference and get it done this way. And then at the end of the five years, there is no more four dollars and 38 cents. I'm just basing that over the next five years. You'll have the shower for decades or you'll have the windows for decades isn't it worth an extra $4.38 over the next five years to get this done the right way between where you were thinking and what it takes to get it done? That's called reduce it to the ridiculous. And here's one more. And this is just a piece of verbiage you really need to be using when you're in this kind of sales. And that is this sentence. If I could, would you? You start learning to lean on your MOD calls and your managers and be more preemptive when you call, if at ever possible. In other words, don't just call and see what your manager can give you. See if you can get these people to a point where you're calling your manager to see if you can get something. Here's a classic. You sat there, maybe you were talking about the shower and their bathroom floors jacked up. I didn't, I just mentioned, wow, the floor is a little rough. I didn't tell them we did flooring. I didn't do anything like that. I went ahead and priced the shower, presented the one year, did my initial visit incentive. They're right on the edge. And then I might pull out the flooring samples now, show them the color and the choices of flooring right there in the middle of the clothes, get her really thinking about how beautiful that would be with the lovely new shower, now she's really done pretty much a serious makeover on the bathroom. She goes in there and paints the wall over a weekend and she's really got done something dramatic. And she can do that herself. And she starts falling in love with the idea of, oh my God, that would be dramatic. That would make an incredible difference. Wow, I can't believe it. And then you, you spring that magic line. I'm not saying I can, but if I could get my manager to do the flooring for you, at the same figures we're at or the same numbers we're at. Not say, don't say cost. Don't say, you know, say figures or the same numbers that we're at. Would that make this easy for you? If I could, would you? And so then, then if they, she says yes, you call your manager, explain where you're at. This is what they agreed. If we could do it, would you? How big is the flooring? Well, it's 60 square feet. I know at our pricing, that's about $1,725. Mr. Snyder, I just, I, I mean, I, I, I know, I know we're talking about giving product away here and it's not something we make a practice of, but it would be a really, and I can just win them over and sell my manager on it and they hear me doing it. If I could, would you? You know, there are many things you could do. You got a big size window project right in the middle of the clothes. You could talk about that crappy front door that they've got. They look so much better if it had a brand new storm door on it. Then you stop and you show them some pictures and some of the product and some of the color choices. And then you say, if I could, would you? I'm not saying I can. It's not my decision. But if we could do this for you, would that make it easy? If I could, would you? This is great if you've had them on a premium wall for the shower and then you downgraded them back to one of the classics. 
bad choice on my words, downgraded. You took them back to the classics, and then she's really, oh, I wish I was just doing the other one. If I could get you the premium wallet, this figure, would you? If I could, would you? It's a great way to tee up one of your incentives when you're going to make an MOD call because now you're not calling your manager to see what the manager can give you. You're calling your manager saying, this is what I want. This is what I want from you, manager. If I could, would you? Start incorporating that theme in your mind of negotiating with people in the close. Find something they like. And I, for me personally, I find it better to not even have it in there, just kind of have talked about it a little bit, then act like I didn't even occur to me, I didn't put it in the figures, and then in the close, I'll actually have them pick the one that they want of whatever this thing is, and then if I could, would you? Other reps might put it in there and then say, and let them see what the number is for the storm door or for the, you know, the extra premium wall or for the flooring, and then, well, if my manager... If I could get my manager to give you that at no cost, would you? And that's fine, too. There's nothing wrong with doing it that way, letting them see the number, and then saying, if I could, would you, and putting a dollar value to it like that. I like to just kind of have touched on it and then bring it up in the close. It helps my clothes be a little more relaxed. It's not all business, business, business. We're going back into a product demo. Ooh, we're getting excited again. And then I'll let my manager ask me how big something is or which one did they select. So they can hear me telling my manager what the cost is so they still hear the number and then my manager can give it to them or give most of it to them. A lot of times we'll give them all but just a hundred or two hundred dollars of it so it doesn't sound like we can just throw products in whenever. Well, Harold, I can't cover all of a $1,725 floor, but let me do some math here. I'll tell you what, I'll do all but two, $210 of it. If they handle $210, we've got the rest of that floor. That makes it more valuable it sounds like you've given them everything that they've got there. But I want you to start thinking, if I could, would you? Don't be calling your manager every time to see what your manager can do. Challenge yourself to call your manager and have something that you want the manager to give you. Have already figured out, what do I need my manager to give me? And that's going to make this happen. Try it out. It'll make a big difference.